Hello, my name is John Sveck. Welcome to this All 24 video. Uh, in today's episode, uh, Coach Waterman and I are here with Coach Joe Damore. He is the <laughs> offensive coordinator at uh, Essex Ravens. Thanks for being with us, Coach. Hey, thanks for having me again, guys. So this is part two of our chat about Coach's sideline play. So we're going to get into some video here, and I'll kind of give you the floor here, Coach. Okay, yeah. So, you know, we line up here. We obviously got our queen over here, so we got it lined up in our formation. We're playing uh, Hamilton here. And uh, this is uh, Coach Underhill. Some of you guys know Coach Underhill uh, from Team Ontario and, uh, you know, with, you know, McMaster. Uh, kind of a Greg Knox guy and uh, philosophy of we're not going to give up the deep ball. We're going to kind of protect there. And, and as you can see, as I talked before a little bit about the Knox philosophy, you see the field corner already three yards inside the numbers um, and really willing to give out the, the one out. And that's what we take here, um, you know, right off the bat. The corner is going to drop, defend against the corner, and, and our quarterback, you know, cues it up, sees it right away, and, and takes that throw. And you could see that, you know, they're kind of robbering that corner route. Uh, he, you know, he was our best player. He was probably the MVP of the league, uh, our number two there. So they're really, you know, two guys kind of squeezing on him. And that half's, you know, kind of uh, put in a bind now. Um, he's kind of put in a bind. It's like, okay, am I going to chase or am I going to stay in my spot? And he wants to put hands on the two to slow his route down, and that just slows him out enough to not be able to get all the way out there. And you can see the, the three coming in off the 10, really chasing the half. As the half runs away, he's chasing them. And, you know, if there's a bigger separation there, if you see that half, if he got out quicker, the throw would be to the three, and the three's open. And, and see the Sam chasing, but he's got leverage, uh, and he's basically winning with speed. So, you know, for us – that's kind of like a play design for us. And, and it's a good look of exactly where everything is. And, and we really have options here is really based on the half and, and what he does. And he took, so takes a while, wants to put hands on the two, doesn't get out to the one. We take the one right away off of, you know, this here is a three-step drop off the gun for us. Um, and it's really, but really for this, this is a throw the one right away. Uh, also we're hitching to the, the 10 out. We'll hitch to the 10 out. Um, and then obviously the corner route off man to man. So that's our first look there. Uh, and we're taking the one right away with the corner leverage the way he is. Uh, you talked in your last video coach about some pre-snap keys based on their alignment to what you're going to get. Can you talk us through that with what you're seeing here with your double tight formation? Yeah. So really for here, you look at, you know, to the boundary, you got the corner out wide and then you got the half high. So you really got the half and the free high. So right now, you know, more likely you're going to get a zone look. Uh, unless you're going to get, you know, a two man out of this, but, uh, you know, very rarely you see two man, uh, in a double tight, you know, you just can't defend the run well enough. Um, you know, down a distance here, I, I'm not quite sure where we're at here down in distance, but, uh, you know, a first and 10 play, you're not gonna, you're not gonna look at it that way in a double tight. So really we think zone right away. Um, obviously we're getting some kind of corner high half low. So again, you, if you pause it, you technically see, you know, once the corner goes high and the half starts to chase you really get that box look right so you got the sam on the bottom box half on this box corner high free high so you get the box look you know four against three uh really what teams want to do is plus one you on defense to the field or to the boundary um but really the half just you know i'm sure getting coached to put hands on the two don't let free release verticals go by you uh so he puts hands on it and the hands on the two is just enough to give a separation with the one. So if you want to right out there, the throw would have been to the, to the X, which would have been our three. Um, but because he tries to put hands on the two, the throws to the one. So, you know, that's kind of how we look at it. That pre snap, once the corner and the half were on the boundary, we know it's, it's a more likely zone to the field and that's what we're working. All right, coach, we got our next clip here. Yep. And this one here, I talked to you a little bit about, you know, the decision-making process. So pre snap, alignment here um you know really they got the corner here the freeze down low so they're really defending run here um and we got man across the board there on the on the field we know because you can look at the sam's eyes right at the three inside leverage you got the two stare in the corner stare. so we're in man right here so this throw should be to the the corner row and as you see our corner just he completely wins he spins the the half this is a you know a touchdown for us um, but he throws the out and, and we win with speed there too. Um, our one is a little deep. 
So our one, you know, that's a 10 yard out route. He's getting greedy. He wants to score from, <laughs> from the 10. So he's trying to get in the end zone. If he does get the ball, he wants to win, but that's too deep because obviously that corner can peel off and play the corner road. So if he sees it in the sky, so we, that route should have ended at the five yard line uh, right there, which he would have pulled. And, and you know what Mo- could have been a reason why we didn't go to the corner. Cause it's a little harder to see uh, with that one going vertical. It's harder to see that open space there. Uh, but the two wins clean, spins them, turns them. And then, you know, the three wins with speed too. He gets up on the, on the Sam and, and wins. So, you know, I can't knock for the touchdown. Um, you know, but at the same time, we have that conversation just saying, hey, you know, in man, that corner routes the throw, you know, and if we're, we're at the 50 yard line, you're throwing the corner, not the out. Um, and, and really just trying to teach the kids that even sometimes when things work out, they're not the right decisions. And you've got to understand that, you know, we're trying to coach right decisions because uh, right decisions lead to right plays. Um, you know, oftentimes bad decisions lead to plays and kids get misguided that, oh, I can throw that play every time. It's like, no, you got lucky. You know, uh, they did something wrong or you just kind of, you know, won with talent. But oftentimes schematically, if you do the right read, you can win with lesser talent. It just schematically because you're doing the right thing. So that's kind of what we try to teach our guys. So, but you know, we ended up scoring here and, and uh, you know, we got the points no matter what. It's all that counts at the end. Eh, Coach? Yeah. And, and the pass pro you, you see, like, you know, you look at numbers wise, they end up dropping the free and the backside corner. So really maximum, you know, pressure could be seven and we have eight pro. So, you know, we're completely clean, such a clean pocket for our quarterback easy catch and throw for us like yeah I really enjoy your point about the depth of that number one receiver coach and just uh highlighting how important it is for everyone to work together and and like you said it could have been very easy for that cornerback to fall off on that corner route if uh, if it was thrown yeah and it happened to us uh at the beginning of the season actually the first game of the year against London uh we ran the exact same play at the goal line and and our and our one actually fell down our number one receiver ran the out route he slipped and the corner peeled off and picked the corner road. We threw the corner and he picked it. Um, we overthrew the corner road a little bit and uh, he picked it because the one fell. So really, we try to keep that one as low as possible um, just so that he, he can't kind of peel off that. And at the same time, we try to get our one to kind of get into that corner physically, like actually run into him so that it forces him to kind of cover him and not just peel off. So we kind of try to get him to, to body him up like that. And he does there, but he does it 10 yards on the field as opposed to five. And coach, is this a play uh, you're better off remaining stationary or would you ever switch release any of the uh, receivers in this concept? Or is it a clear, cleaner picture if they just stay, stay in their normal? Yeah. Game? And that's a, that's another big philosophy that I've changed over the years. I, I do switch release. I, I do like it, uh, but I very rarely cross motion anymore. Um, and I know it's like, a faux pas in the Canadian game, not to motion. It's like a sin as an offensive guy, like not taking advantage of that. But when it comes to quarterback reads, I think it's such a challenge, especially at this level that kids could try to understand that, you know, when you move a guy from 32 to 41, you know, so to speak, you move a guy like that half on the backside totally changes. He goes high or he comes all the way across or, you know, then there's movement. And, and if we're asking, asking our quarterbacks to one defend read, they have to try to find that guy late in the process. You know, the Sam linebacker or the will things change as you move people late defenses move late and therefore their reads are late. Uh, So we try to just be as stationary as possible. Give the quarterback, okay, that's where the Sam is and that's where he is and I can find him and and do the read. So there are some plays that we ran during the course of the year that we did switch release. Uh, We like to boundary switch release with the two guys uh, really because often you'll get man back there or you'll get a simple, you know, one defender high, one defender low. So it didn't really affect the read too much, but very rarely do I, do I do it on plays that, you know, I know there's a guy that if I do motion, it's going to change his look. So I, I, I try to keep it simple. Certain plays, I think we can get away with it. Other plays, uh, I think it, it hurts our quarterback's uh, progression. Perfect. Well, why don't we jump onto this last play here? So as I say that, I, I run motion here. So, <laughs> um, so see, a little bit of a different alignment to start here, Coach, and your double tight has, has allowed you to put that number one in the boundary off the line. So you want to talk us through this a little bit? 
Yeah, so this is our standard queen. So this is our queen formation to the field, one to the boundary, and everyone's off the line of scrimmage, gives us a running start. Um, really for us here, the reason we did the motion is because, you know, London played a lot of man-to-man. -man. Uh, we're inside the 20, 75% of the chance we're going to get a man look. Um, him motioning across gives us the exact look we want. The corner comes across, we know it's man. And then making him become the two uh, really kind of, you know, challenges them a little bit if they're going to bump and stuff as opposed to him just becoming the three. And then right there, like we're in complete leverage here. The corner is kind of lazy running across like oftentimes they do. And now, you know, huge separation here. We're on the corner route. You know, the one you could see them eyes right on the one, you know, again, our, uh, you know, number one, again, pushes this not bad, like still a little bit deep, maybe eight yards or so, but he's at the five. So he's not in the end zone. The one's chasing right away, so eyes are nowhere near the corner. And now we got him. We got him exactly where we want. Um, quarterback's got to make a good throw, and he does. And he hits him right on the money, and it's, you know, it's six points for us. So, you know, right here, London brought a ton of pressure all the time. But we were able, eight-man pro, we cleaned it up. You know, it's good protection. No one's in there. Uh, our running back does a great job of stepping in, taking the blitzing linebacker. That's a clean pocket as, as well as you want it. Um, again, we, we had a super talented O-line, um, again, probably four of those five are going to play youth sports. Uh, one is probably going to go to the U S. Um, so we, we were talented there and, and I want, you know, people to understand talent does help and, uh, things like that, but this really puts us in a good position. Our, our best player in open space on a deep corner route. And it's, it's a pretty simple pitch and catch. I really like, I mean, you're almost getting the best of both worlds with this formation here because you're, you're stressing the defense to make some decisions and how they're going to cover it. And then at the same time, you have the advantage of using that max protection. So it's pretty advantageous. Yeah. And really oftentimes in this kind of formation, you know, we used it quite a bit at the U, you know, two, three years ago, but I think design wise, a lot of our routes were designed to go in and, it's a lot easier to defend those guys defending the tight ends. They would peel off. And, and once they found the tight end stayed depressed, bro, they would drop into zone coverage and, and really became like, you know, you got three in breaking routes or something like that. You have like six, seven defenders defending three guys. And it's like, everyone's doubled and like, no one could get open. Yeah. You have eight man pro, but <laughs> no one's open. Um, so really when we run these kind of formations, most of our routes are outbreaking uh, because yeah, the guy covering the tight end there can't help you know, the number two on an out route. He can't help with that. You know I mean? Just schematically, he has to stay within the box. So we really kind of changed that philosophy, a lot of it being outbreaking and, and things like that. Whether we ran two-man routes to the field in double tight or three-man routes, it was really a lot of outbreaking things and, and really kind of going away from that box where a lot of those linebackers are defending and helping out in zone coverage. We kind of try to put people on islands out there and the corners, the halves and the sands and, and really kind of forcing them to defend. Um, this is a good formation too. If you get that motion later in the game, we would probably run to the week, you know, run some kind of pull week to the boundary where we can get, you know, someone open space. If we can leverage that half over there and, and kind of work his outside shoulder and, and we run some kind of, we, we were able to run some QB game. Uh, we ran some QB run game uh, to the boundary out of queen and stuff like that to, to kind of get leverage now. Now we're a numbers game to the field because, I mean, excuse me, to the boundary because they, they brought the corner all the way across. So it really allows us to, to kind of, once they see, again, what they're doing to defend it, uh, to kind of put us in a direction that we want to go to be successful.